You've said that this is the most difficult film that you've ever worked on. Why? It is the most delicate film because it's it's just so delicate. Uh, to my surprise, it, when when we were as we were putting this together, you know, we we set out to make a very sincere uh, film. I mean, a real bare bones, bare raw kind of honesty. And the danger in that is that. Um, in sincerity, it can become too earnest and and tip the, tip the scales of the film. And it was very interesting to see how one piece of voiceover or or um, holding on a take for too long could suddenly make it uh, just too earnest. And then if we were, it worked the, conversely the other way. And we're talking about seconds. And if we got out too early, it would be flat and the emotion wasn't there. You've never done anything like that before, have you? Um, probably not to this degree. I'm, I'm usually more physical. Um, but, you know, I think of the, the great Anthony Hopkins, and, and I've always been mesmerized by what he did in Remains of the Day, and that it was, he was able, in his stillness, to still be, to invoke incredible emotion. Um, and I, I, I think, looking back, I've certainly taken a page uh, from him. In this. And then the other thing which you cannot escape, and you sort of alluded to it, um, it is also about loneliness. It's also about father and son, their relationship. It's also about masculinity and vulnerability. Before I get down to the nitty gritty of each of those, how did you process all of that? I mean, you said it's, you know, it's come at a time in your life where it's interesting for you to grapple in such a public way with those emotions? Well, I mean, on one hand, you know, you get older and you just get tired of, of protecting yourself or having any secrets. You know, you just want to get on with it. And we wanted to get on with it in this film in a way. Um, I mean, we all carry, I think, um, great pains, great regrets. Um, um, we've all experienced loss. Um, we've all um, experienced great loneliness at times. And we're good at packing that away, not dealing with it. Some are, are really good at getting through it and, and, um, and coming out the other side in a, in a more well-rounded, um, I think, more um, confident and loving human being. So we just wanted to, like, no holds barred. Let's, let's just go. Let's get it out there. Well, look, here's a lovely um, clip that, I mean, I, we have it because it's available, but it's still a really um, important clip in this regard. So we're just going to play. This is, again, part of what you say to your dad. I recall how we used to watch black and white movies together. Musicals were your favorite. I remember you tutoring me in math. You instilled in me a strong work ethic. You should know I've chosen a career that you would approve of. I've dedicated my life to the exploration of space. And I thank you for that. That was a voiceover, and you're telling your dad those things. But how did it sort of reflect your own life, your own relationship? Um, you have sons and daughters, and you are a son. How did it sort of bond with the, the, the real Brad Pitt? My individual experience is somewhat universal in the fact that our, you know, our parents are our universe, our gods, our first imprint on how to um, behave, react, um, feel in the world. And, and with that, um, to different degrees, um, some of us more than others carry pain and confusion from that. Uh, uh, um, I think it almost takes a lifetime to understand what was yours and what was theirs. Um, as, a, as a child, I think most of us usually take um, fault or, or something of that nature on ourselves. So I, 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 I think it was just a real investigation of, of parsing, parsing through that and to really, under, to really be able to understand yourself. As a dad, I mean, my dad always said he wanted to give me a better life than he had coming from extreme poverty, and he did it. And it makes me think, as a dad, what do I have to offer that's better than I had to, to my kids? What about women? 
It's interesting that <laughs> the two female characters are pretty minor characters, pretty minimal appearances on, um, you know, on screen. And some people have remarked on that. Tell me the, the reason for that and the, the thinking behind that. I'm not sure what the remarks are. I mean, this is, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it is an investigation of masculinity and our, our, our de definitions of a Marlboro man type, um, never show weakness versus, um, um, I guess, uh, vulnerability. Um, and, and so, you know, like Liv Tyler's character represents his regrets, what he got wrong, what he, what he feels he, he mishandled or he missed. Um, and that she is, is an example of, um, in the feminine, uh, an example that maybe in the masculine we need to take note of, we could take better note of. Mm -hmm. And then Ruth Negga's character is, is more this, um, voice of wisdom that, um, that sends us off in uh, the direction the faded direction that will be the ultimate, um, I guess, death, rebirth, if I can speak poetically, so poetically. You've been through some fairly public, you know, sad things recently. You've, you, you've been divorced and publicly you then spoke about what it was like to go through one of these things that not many men talk about and many men don't think it's okay to get help for certain things like um, alcohol and other kinds of substance. And you spoke without revealing the obvious confidential nature of Alcoholics Anonymous about, about what it did and what it gave to you. Can you tell me so that other people, you know, who are in that kind of situation might get a little bit of a you know, a boost from somebody like you if they need that kind of help? I don't know. I mean, certainly for me, you know, what I, what I realized was I was, I was running to things to avoid, to avoid tough feelings, painful feelings. Um, I just didn't know how to deal with them. And looking for anything I found that I, I, I use for escape, to escape um, um, those kinds of... Um, uh, I guess difficult feelings. I don't know how better to describe it. I mean, that can be anything. That can be drugs, booze, Netflix, <laughs> you know, snacks, um, anything. I don't want to be, I don't want to at this point to be running from anything. I want to be, I want to sit in it. I want to feel it. I want to get through the rough night. And I found um, in doing so, you just you come out the other side with a with a, a more profound understanding of yourself and a, a greater gratefulness for um, those in your life um, and the birds and the trees and everything else. I was just interviewing Jody Cantor and Megan Tui, who've written She Said, and it's the inside story of Harvey Weinstein and how they reported and broke the news that launched the Me Too movement. And they have a lot of great things to say about Gwyneth Paltrow and how instrumental she was in helping them when they needed to sort of connect the dots and, and try to you know, try to, to find a way to confirm some of the things that he did. And as you know, this has been a huge and important story and it's rocked Hollywood. But this is what they said about Gwyneth's role and in, in relation to that, about your role as well. So I just want to play you a little soundbite and get your reaction. The essence of the Gwyneth story is not just about the fact that she says he ended a business meeting at the Peninsula Hotel in Beverly Hills by placing hands on her and saying, let's finish this in the bedroom. The point is she had been cast in the movie Emma, which was a star making role. It was a great part, but it hadn't been filmed yet. And after Brad Pitt, her boyfriend at the time, confronted Weinstein, Weinstein called Gwyneth, according to her, and said, you're going to ruin everything. You're gonna screw up your whole career. And she thought she was going to be fired. 
So, Brad Pitt, it's obviously Gwyneth's story to tell and the reporter's story to tell, but I wonder if you feel, you know, you can add anything to that, because you do come out as, you know, one of the heroes of this story. You confronted a guy that very few people were willing to confront, apparently. Oh, well, I think that's, a, I mean, a bit much. I, I have a couple things to say. I mean, at that moment, you know, I was just a, I, I was a boy from the Ozarks on the playground, and, and that's... I mean, that was, that's how we confronted with things um, and wanted to make sure nothing happened further because she was going to do two films. Um, you, you know, I, I think the, the interesting thing is that we, Hollywood specifically, but the workplace, um, men and women's dynamics is being recalibrated, recalibrated in a very good way. And it's, uh, it's long overdue. And um, I do think that's an important story to tell.